Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today is Monday, so one of the things that I wanted to do for 2022, not a resolution but a goal, is to set smaller goals and make them into bigger goals as time goes on. One of those things includes this type of video at least once a week. I'm sorry for that bright corner right there. I, the sun is extra bright today, but I'll put my book covers up there so you won't have to look at that during the video. So, every Monday I hope to make this video to bring you this content to this channel and the video itself will include all the books that I read for the previous week. Now, I count my weeks from Monday through Sunday because that's how Happy Planner does does it this is Monday and down here is Sunday so I count my uh, weeks that way and that in the videos that I make will reflect that now I am counting this video from January 1st through January 9th and on future Mondays I will only count them for Monday through Sunday as I mentioned the reason I'm doing from the first is because we're just starting the first week of January or the first yeah the, finishing the first week of January which started um, on uh, Friday I believe yeah Friday no I'm sorry Saturday was the first so um, I'm starting this video with those books so without any further ado I'm gonna move this out of the way I just want to give you a few stats to think about. The first one is I managed to read 22 books in nine, excuse me, nine days. Now, mind you, you're going to hear a lot of Harlequin books mentioned in this video. And a lot of those books are either 224 pages or 288 pages. And that's why I was able to get 22 books read in nine days. Now, I would imagine this time next week that number will drop to more like 11 or 12 because I only have, I think, three. Did I print that page? I only have, yeah. Okay, it's, it's rather small, but these are the Harlequin books I have for review. Anything that you see in this color. And these right here are the short books. And they're three series. The... Uh, the Dreamer series, the Investigator series, and the Believer series. And I only have two or three more left in this column here. You'll see the colors go across. This goes up to April, I believe. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, May and June. But anyway, uh, those are Harlequin trade publications. And those books are 352 pages or more. This stack, like I said, is, is a shorter stack. So with that said and done, I was able to get 22 books read. So what was the composition of those books? There were two audio books, one library book, which was a Kindle book, and I believe uh, tw 19 e-arcs or galleys, advanced reader copies, which were all Kindle books. Now, how do I get so many books read when some of my friends see me on Zoom all the time? I didn't bring it in here, but I think I have one over here. I just get one of these. I have this, these earbuds, these wireless earbuds. And what I do is I put one e earbud in and I have the book playing and if someone needs my attention or something in the conversation catches my attention, I just swipe my screen, which pauses it, or I press pause, and I go back and forth. Another thing I do is I read when I first wake up, and I read when I go lay down at night. So I get these books read, and I get these reviews written. Granted, I have a lot of reviews to write, but I've, I've already started the draft process, and the draft process for review books for most of them include excerpts so I have to use HTML uh, language in order to make those excerpts come into a box so while I'm doing some of the things that I do every day I'm doing all of these drafts so I may have 20 or so drafts on my blog that will eventually post like today 
I posted a review at 4 a.m. Well, I was asleep at 4 a.m., but weeks ago I wrote the review, put it as a scheduled review, so it went up today. That was The Siren of Sussex by Mimi Matthews. All right, now let's talk about the books that I read. The first book was the longest book. It was 704 pages. It was The Stylist Crown by James Rowlands. Now, The Stylist Crown was an audiobook arc or an uh, audiobook galley that I received from NetGalley. And I got this book as a widget from the publisher. A widget is when a publisher or a publicist contacts you and said, Hey, I, we have this book. Are you interested in it? If you are, click the link below and here you go. So the Stylus Cron was one such book. Now it was sci-fi. I don't read sci-fi much at all. I think in 2021 I read two, maybe three. The previous year I think I read two. So I don't really read sci-fi. And of all the genres that I read, it's pretty much my least favorite of genres that I try to read a little bit of each year. So this was basically about a dangerous journey that was a, started with a young girl who was mostly blind and she had a second sight and she could uh, foretell that the world was going to end by an, an apocalypse. Because of this she was hunted and uh, with a pretty much a death sentence hanging over her head and her battle to stay alive and to save the world. Um, I'm going to give this book three stars and it's pro probably not fair to the author or to the genre itself but I don't really like the genre. The audiobook was long like 30 hours so at two speed it took two days to listen to but I will have a review on my blog for this when I have the time. Then, oh, another thing I want to mention, several of these books are not yet published. So I will tell you the publication date and I will also have that in the description box below in case you're interested in any of the books. So the next such book is Falling for the Baldessari Prince by Rebecca Winters. And this book will be released on January 25th. Now, this book and the next one I talk about I have written the review to and it's about a, a young woman whose name is Francesca and she's a vet and one of her new customers comes in and it was Prince Vincendo Baldessari and his dog was ailing. Now Baldessari, uh, Vincenzo was a public figure and this girl Francesca had the hugest crush on him but he was an untouchable. He was un untouchable for three reasons. Number one, he was a prince. Number two, he was engaged to, as it turns out, her cousin. And number three, their families were feuding. So he was an untouchable, but she had a crush on him. Well, as it turns out, Francesco, excuse uh, Vincenzo, I'm mixing up the names, Vincenzo, Vincenzo tells Francesca, listen, my family and her family made this marriage vow or pact and there's no love involved. What's more is the girl he was engaged to broke it off anyway. It's just a matter of his high status as a prince that presented a problem proving that he did not want to marry this other girl and all along Fran uh, Francesca and Vincenzo started to have strong feelings for one another. Very very nice story and I give that one four stars. The next book also comes out on January 25th. It's a proposal in Providence by Donna Alwood and this is about a girl named Anemone Jones and she's a PR assistant to a family called the Pembertons. One of the members of this family treats her really badly, like like a, she, the other girl is kind of like an ice queen to her, but it really comes to no surprise. And the reason why is it turns out that she's a half sibling to the Pemberton adult children. Their father had an affair, and she was a product of that affair. And now their father has died. And he wanted her included in the inheritance and in the will. And so 
at least one member of the family from the beginning didn't like the fact that this no-name person is now going to receive what would ultimately end up being millions of dollars as a uh, child that was a product of an affair. One of the, uh, there was somebody named Philip LaRue who worked for the Pemberton's and who would have been her boss, uh, but he had something else going on in Greece, so she agrees to go to Greece to work for him, and now she's got to reconcile her past, the connection to the Pemberton family, and her boss, Philippe, in that they have feelings for one another. I thought it was a really, really tender story, and in my actual review, I wrote, this ended up not being a case of the sins of the father being cast on his child. I don't know why I thought of that phrase, but she never got to know her father. She was not responsible for his actions, and I like how everything came together. The rest of these books I talk about, I have not yet written reviews. As mentioned, I'm working on all the drafts. The Shoe Diaries by Darby Bayham is the next book, and that also comes out on January 25th. And this is basically Reagan Ray Doucette, who has a coveted career in Washington, D.C. She's almost laser-focused on that. But the thing is, she is a shoe queen or water or whatever you want to call her. And she has a, a shoe closet with every type of shoe the higher the heel the better and she also has friends who have a love of shoes so shoes kind of take precedence over the romance that develops in this book it's kind of uh, like a show I've never seen but you kind of think of sex in the city of one woman with two friends so in this book you have three friends it, but they're black and that's the difference in their little quest for love. And she does find love. I really liked it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going, probably going to rate it a four when I get that review written. Okay, we're going to move on to a classic that I read, which was Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. Now, I wanted to read this book because... I found out that there's going to be a movie with Kenem, Kenneth Bragan playing Hercule Poirot. And I love Hercule Poirot. I read dozens and dozens and dozens of Agatha Christie books as I was growing up. And he was my favorite detective. And now this is about a crew along the Nile. And someone has been shot. A young woman. And now Hercule has a very small group of people who one of them is a murderer at least one of them is a murderer and his job on finding out such such murder said murderer so i can't wait to see that movie the next book i read was a new foundation by Ro rochelle aylers now the reason i read this was my one library book i had christmas at the chateau for review which was the second book in the series so I thought I would go ahead and see if I would want to read the first one and I'm really glad that I did and it was about a woman named Sonia Rios Martin who was able to get away from an abusive mar marriage and she now finds herself at, uh, attracted to her new boss but she has that baggage of her previous marriage and he also has baggage and their trials to find their way to love i probably will rate this a five it was really good i don't know that i'll review it on my blog because i wanted to just have the background story for the second book that second book is christmas at the chateau this book has already been released i think november 28th and this was about a chef viola uh viola because her her uh the man that she became attracted to called her viola, like the uh, the instrument. But, oh, I'm getting it backwards. She said it's not pronounced like the instrument. So I'm not even going to keep trying to play with that name. But anyway, she has an attraction to her family estate's caretaker. 
does he feel the same way and will anything happen between the two of them that is Christmas at the Chateau I did enjoy it but I like the first one better the next one I read was New Year's Kiss with a Cinderella there was a young woman who had never been kissed and her resolution was to be kissed at least once before the bell dropped or the ball dropped that was her goal her friend kind of put her up to it well she was at this uh, no I'm mixing up books anyway let me take this back I will talk about that book later she's at a ball like a party and she kisses a handsome stranger okay I like I said I just mixed up another book that was it she kissed him New Year's the you know whoa it's New Year's and that was it she goes on to work life is normal well the, she was a doc, she was a nurse a nurse practitioner and they another a, a new doctor came on scene and as he's being introduced to the staff they lock eyes it was the man she kissed at New Year's okay so how do they get past the fact that they both really really remember that kiss I really really liked the story because it wasn't just about their romance it was about him and his sister and the problems that his sister had and how it affected his life and whether or not he felt he would be a person worthy of a relationship this is definitely going to get five stars because I loved that story I loved the drama behind the problems that his sister had and I was more pulled into that and understood the dynamic as far as it affecting the conflict of him falling for this nurse practitioner really really good 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 book excellent excellent book the next book I read was the five day reunion by Mona Shroff this one comes out on January 25th and this was about a law student named Anita Varani who hadn't seen her husband since her ex since their divorce but his sister is getting married and their grandfather had previously had a heart attack and they never told the grandfather that he had gotten divorced the prominent high like high society uh, they live in India they're very very affluent and if they family felt uh, the young man's mother felt that if her father knew that her son had gotten divorced it would have broke his heart and it would have put a bad name on the family well as mentioned his sister was about to get married so they come up with a, the mother comes up with a plan let's bring your ex-wife here the, they had a, the Indian uh, the uh, custom for the uh, rehearsal and the, uh, the dinner before the wedding and the wedding itself the whole thing took about five days so they wanted this girl to act like she was still married to him and that way they wouldn't further upset the grandfather like like I said he had had a heart attack and they were really worried about his frail health really really good movie excuse me good movie really really good book about how they fell back in love or maybe even realized they never fell out of love to begin with as a matter of fact we find out even why she left him and why they got divorced in the first place all right now I moved on to little girl gone now remember I'm reading Harlequin books so that was I think the Harlequin romance now we're moving into the Harlequin investigator series the first one I read was a procedural crime number one first book in a series by Amanda Stevens this one also came out I believe November 28th and this is a young girl who had been I, I won't say necessarily kidnapped but had disappeared so we have Thea Lamb as uh, a, f a special agent of the FBI who's looking for this little girl she's working with her former FBI partner Jake Stilwell and their relationship starts to grow despite the tragedy of the little girl that's missing but also it deals with the past and how she's still trying to reconcile her past and something had happened that broke them up in the first place 
and whether or not they'll be able to get past that in order to find their way to love. Really good story. Gonna get four stars. Um, there is a new book that comes out in a few weeks. John Doe, excuse me, John Doe Cold Case. That's the second book in the series. And um, if I haven't already, I haven't checked. Uh, I have not checked um, Net Galley, but I'm just curious because if it's available, I am definitely going to get it. Um, it'll just take me a second. And this is Amanda Stevens. Let's see if it's available. Because if it is, I'm going to read it and make a series of view of it. Stevens. And no, John Doe Cold Case. Okay, so no, it's not available yet. But it should it show up on that gallery, I'll grab it because I am auto approved and I'll read it. Then we move, and that was a four star, but the next one is in an operative's last stand by Juno Rushdan. It's the fourth book in the Fugitive Heroes Tobaz Unit series. I have not read the first three books, but I'm telling you right now, this was definitely a five star book for me. This was a kill squad that's coming in because there was a uh, someone named Hunter Wright who was being hunted by his former CIA uh, and now they want him dead and then there's the deputy detective uh, deputy director Kelly Russell who seems seemingly is one of those who want Hunter dead who wants Hunter dead this book started off at a fast pace it never let up for one second I mean I think I read this book in like 90 minutes to less than two hours. It was just a you know, excellent, 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 excellent book. Loved it. I, I like Juno Rushdan. I've read a couple of her other books. And I may even go back and read the first three books in the series. Another thing about it is Hunter is like all of his previous co uh, friends that worked for the CIA. They had found mates and now... He might have that very chance. This video is running long, so let me get to the next one. Undercover Canine Cowboy by Addison Fox, the fourth book in the Midnight Pass Texas series. It comes out on January 25th, and this is about trying to stop a drug epidemic in Midnight Pass. Uh, it's about another FBI agent, and it's Ryder Durant who tries to do what he can, and he's trying to set a trap with somebody named Aiden Reynolds or Arden Reynolds and there's a canine involved so you should see a picture of a dog on the cover really it was a good book not as exciting as the one that I had just read before this one but it was a good book I will get the review written there were two other uh, three other books the Cowboys Deadly Mission Under the Rancher's Protection and then this uh, this one was the third one uh, Undercover Canine Cowboy I wrote down number four up here, but obviously it's number three. Then I read His to Defend by Sharon Cooper, Sharon C. Cooper. And this was really, I, I was wondering how this book was going to turn out. There was a woman, her name was Amina Kelly, and then there was Sergeant uh, Maxwell Layton. And they met at a party, and he was with his best friend, and they liked each other. But his best friend also liked her. And it looks like she, well, she apparently chose his best friend and married his best friend. Now, Maxwell was a cop and her husband, uh, Maxwell is a cop and her husband was a cop. Well, her ex-husband gets killed. Well, little did Max know that Amina and her husband, they were already divorced before he died. And there was a lot of drama leading up to the fact that Maxwell and Amina really liked each other from the get-go and they still liked each other but where could that go where could that possibly go considering she married his former best friend what led to her uh, ex-husband's murder and how could these two possibly fall in love I haven't written this review but I'm probably going to give it five stars because I like I like the drama in this one. I really, really did like it. So it's probably, like I said, it's going to probably get five stars. There's another five-star book coming up. 
This is If You Ask Me by Betty White. Now, Betty White wrote this book. This was her sixth book, and she wrote at least seven, and she narrated two of them, and this is one of the ones that she narrated. Now, I read this book the day that I found out that she had passed away. So it was bittersweet hearing her narrate her own book and talk about certain uh, shows that she was in, her love of writing, her hatred of technology, I didn't know that, and more importantly, her great, great, great love of animals. I did not know that she was such a champion for animals. In each little part of this memoir were named chapters. Like every chapter had a name. What I liked about this one was uh, there was at least two animals that she had run, ran across. One was Coco and how these animals affected her and how they touched her. Another thing I liked about this book is she read a lot of, she had a, obviously she had a publicist, but the publicist would earmark certain fan mail. And she didn't do anything electronically. This was all in paper. And the publicist would put certain stacks of mail that Betty would read. Every day she would read a lot and a lot of her own fan mail and respond to as many as she possibly could. Obviously five stars. And I probably will hunt down her other books and read them as well. The next book was The White Rose Network by Ellie Midwood. This comes out on February 9th. And this was about 1943 Germany. And it was about a young woman named Sophie Scholl who ended up being one of history's bravest women that led a revolution against Hitler and his cronies. Now, she was a young woman who her role would have been to sew uniforms for the German soldiers because she was German. Well, she had a brother named Hans and his friend Alexander. And between the three of them, they created what was called the White Rose Network. And there were leaflets and miss missives that were deigned to discredit Hitler and his regime. Excellent book. Definitely five stars. I love Ellie Midwood. I have read several, several of her books and will continue to read her books every chance I get. Now, I did research uh, this young woman and I also researched the White Nose Rose Network. So I have to give accolades to the author for developing this incredible story, a fictional story based on a true person. I love when authors do that and Ellie Midwood does it very very well. The next book I read was The Sapphire Cove by Sophie Anderson. This one doesn't come out until February 18th. Now this was about a young woman who as a little girl she discovers that she had a half-sister. She finds a photograph and she finds out something about her family. Where, who is this sister and where is she? So that's part of the story. The other part of the story is one of the two girls had kidney failure and needed a kidney transplant. Would these half-sisters be compatible and would the kidney transplant work? So it was a little bit of the past and a lot of the present in this book very emotional story. I'm going, I'm vacillating between four and five stars. Not quite sure where I'm going to go with that, but I'm definitely going to uh, get that review written soon. Still thinking about reading it. I really liked it. Sorry, my blast strap keeps showing my shirts are getting too big. Okay, so that is The Sapphire Cove by Sophie Anderson. Loved it, and I'm going to get that review. Uh, actually, a lot of this stuff is already drafted. I just have to finalize it. Then I wrote, excuse me, then I wrote, then I read The Dust Bowl Orphans by Suzette D. Harrison. This one comes out on February 7th. Now, right away, I thought of um, uh, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. The Dust Bowl in the 1930s, and I'm, I'm going to pop up a few uh, screenshots of uh, what the Dust Bowl looked like during that time. A really, really incredibly 
devastating dust storm that happened in the 1930s. Well, Kristen Hanna showed how a couple of people, uh, siblings, made it from, uh, I think it was Minnesota, Texas. I can't remember where it took place. Um, oh my goodness, I should remember where it took place. Oklahoma, 1935 Oklahoma. In Kristen Hanna's book, they trekked all the way from Oklahoma to California, the land of, you know, the, just the land of plenty. In this book, the two girls also trekked from Oklahoma to California. The difference is, these were African American girls in the 1930s. And so therefore, you know what prejudice was like during that time. I mean, incredible prejudice. Prejudice. Well, these girls had lost their sister. In, okay, it was Faith, Hope, and Charity. Charity had died previous. Well, during the Dust Bowl storm, Hope and Faith got separated from their mother or their parents. So, I'm going to get these names right. Faith was 15 and Hope was five. And Faith did everything she could to protect, care for Cardinal, and get her and her sister safely to California, all while looking for their parents. Meanwhile, this all oh, this story just broke my heart. I, I kind of feel emotional talking about it. I really, really do. It's wow, that's this book hit me hard. That's the Dust Bowl Orphans. Like I said, I'm I popped I'm gonna pop a couple pictures up. Unbelievable story. All right, moving on to something that wasn't so impactful was Very Cold Secrets by Sammy A. Abrams. Now, this was about a woman who was a forensic anthropologist, and she, when she was younger, her best friend and herself were kidnapped. Her best friend was murdered, but she managed to survive. Now, could this killer, this killer is still after Melanie, apparently. Now, she works with Detective Jason Cooper, and here's the catch. It was his sister that was kidnapped along with Melanie, but his sister died. So therefore, the wall of resentment between them was huge because he blamed her for her sister's death. Why? There was something that she did during that kidnapping event that caused Jason to um, blame her for his sister's death. But she's still looking for answers, and the killer is still looking for her. Really good book, Very Cold Case Secrets. Might give it five stars, but at least four. The next one I read was Christmas Vendetta by Valerie Hansen, the emergency responders book number four. A lot of these books were deep into series, and I just simply didn't have, to have time to read them all. So this was about a woman named Sandy Lynn Forrester, and someone broke into home and attacked her roommate, Eden or Enid. I think her roommate, roommate's name was Enid. Enid now ends up in the hospital, and the thing is, it, it turned out that the person that attacked Enid thought they were getting Sandy Lynn. And once the attacker realized it wasn't Sandy Lynn that he almost killed, now Sandy Lynn is a target and somehow or another he's determined to kill her. So someone that she works with is somebody that she really, they, they were high school sweethearts. His name was uh, Clay Danforth. And now Clay is trying to save her life. This book might get three stars. And the reason why is because how many death uh, attempt, how many attempts on someone's life can one book have? I'll just leave it like that. Then we read, then I read Her Christmas Dilemma by Brenda Minton. Minton. I'm sorry I said that wrong. And this one was about uh, Clara Fisher who comes home and she's now becomes a housekeeper for Tucker Church who has a niece that he has suddenly has custody of for who knows for how long. Now Clara has her reasons for being where she is during the holidays. 
but she plans on moving on with her life and she was a victim of a huge tragedy and now she takes on this temporary job as a housekeeper thing is she doesn't have any skills and the one skill she truly lacks is cooking but yet she's serving as a housekeeper and so obviously her and Tucker fall in love but not without its challenges because of the tragedy that befell her before she met up with him and moved into the town so it's a matter of how long would she stay what about her present circumstances and where will she go from there really good story i loved it i love the teenager i love that drama that side story of the teenager and why she was with tucker in the first place really really good story i'm almost at the end i am then I read Opening His Holiday Heart by Renee Ryan. This is the third book in the Thunder Ridge series. The first two books are Surprise Christmas Family and The Sheriff's Promise. And this is for Maya Sutton Wentworth, who was determined to win a contest of the mostly the, the best decorated town. The whole town cooperated with this huge holiday decoration except for one shop a little i think a coffee shop casey evans was like nope not going to decorate as a matter of fact he was called ebenezer Shrew, uh ebenezer scrooge at least three maybe four times in the book and they were former high school sweethearts but something happened on her 18th birthday that split them up and now she's the mother of a young son named toby and the, the, the drama is what is going to happen with the fact that Casey and um, Sutton, Sutton is the mayor, the woman, Casey is the, is the man, what, why is he a Scrooge? Why does he hate Christmas? How does he really feel about Sutton? Where does Toby play into it, the little boy? And it was a really good story. Probably going to give it five stars. The last book that I read was last night was Nursing Her Amish Neighbor. This was the sixth book. I don't think I wrote down. Oh, I did. Let me give you the other ones. Second Chance Amish Bride, The Wedding Quilt Bride, The Promised Amish Bride, The Amish Widow's Heart, A Secret Amish Crush, Crush and this one, Nursing Her Amish Neighbor. Now, this was about a young Amish man who had been involved in an accident where uh, his younger brother got killed and now he is in a wheelchair scar on his face or his cheek I believe and now um, Miriam Stolfus is looking after him she was a kind of like a physical therapist uh, not you know fully professionally trained but yet quite skilled so the question is can she reach him and deal with Matthew his name was Matthew King and it hit the trauma involving the loss of his younger brother the fact that he is not really responding well to therapy and how they fell in love really 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 sweet story Amish romance is one of my favorite subgenres so I believe that brings me to the end of this very long video but there you have it that's 22 books and here's my cat knocking things around I guess you get to say hi to Toby, who just is determined to ruin the end of this video. But uh, say hi to everybody since you knocked everything around. So that ends my video with 22 books. And I, um, I did want to tell you the stats. If I didn't already do it, uh, I think it was 5,000. There he goes. Okay. Let's just do one more thing before we go. For, that was 6,034 pages in 9 days, which was 274 average pages per book and 670 pages per day. just wanted to say that. Alright, thank you. Bye. I'm just going to throw this in at the end of the video to say that all the books, the release dates, and the Amazon links will be in the description below. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.